Hello there. Today I'm continuing my look at some of the Chablis from the La Chablisian Cooperative. So this is a, a Chablis Premier Cru, this is Mont de Milieu, and this is the 2019 vintage of that. Um, the La Chablisian Cooperative was founded in 1923, which means it's celebrating its 100th anniversary this year. Um, initially a small group of uh, producers getting together with the encouragement of their, their um, local priest um, to form a cooperative in terms of for marketing perspective really they were um, blending wines together um, and selling selling them on the wholesale market so it wasn't until the 1950s that they they took a step forward in terms of taking control of the quality of the wines they made um, at which stage they um, they took juice into the winery and made into a winery and made the wine themselves and more recently they've built a, a, a very impressive modern winery which has far more capacity than they actually require but it enables them to have lots of um, uh, operational flexibility in terms of the way they handle batches they can keep things separate for as long as they want they don't they're not forced into blending them for, for um, operational reasons the winery currently has 300 members um, and those members own about a quarter of Chablis vineyards, so they, they have somewhere in the region of um, uh, 1,100 hectares of vines and produce somewhere in the region of a um, quarter of a million cases of wine a year, making them the biggest, biggest Chablis producer. Montemilio, um, quite a highly reputed Premier Cru, um, nicely situated on the um, east bank of the River Serra to the east of the town of Chablis itself and, and the, the um, vineyard is sort of follows on to the southeast of, of the hillside that is the Grand Cru. There, there is two little side valleys come down so you have the Grand Cru, um, you have the Premier Cru Monte de Tonnerre, there's a side valley and then Montmilieu is beautifully situated um, on the end of a spur with lovely south facing vineyards. Very typical Kimmeridgian soils. There's a, um, an underlying Kimmeridgian marl with um, chalk and um, clay above that. The soil, red clay in fact, above that. The soils here are very low in nutrients, meaning that this is a low vigour vineyard, um, sort of restricting yields and stopping too much vegetative growth. So the combination of the, the excellent southerly aspect and these um, constrained yields gives lovely ripeness to the wines from Mont de Milia. Um, so it's often seen as a, a sort of a good alternative to a Grand Cru there. So let's, um, let's see what we think of the wine, shall we? Um, looking at the colour there, you've got a medium uh, lemony yellow, I suppose. Um, swelling it, there's not uh, too much viscosity, it's not forming tears that readily. Uh, the wine is 13% alcohol, so it's a dry wine. I guess it, it will have been aged on its lees, but um, not particularly viscous from that point of view. So let's, um, let's see what we'll make of the aroma, shall we? The aromas are really quite intense and they're dominated by fresh fruit. There's a sort of an apple lemony freshness initially gives way to more of a sort of a, um, a pithy lemon curd note. It isn't quite the easy yeasty notes that we've seen on some of their other wines. This has a lovely lifted fresh fruit and that's, um, that stands out very much. So let's have a, let's have a taste and see what we make of it. On the palate, the first thing you see is a really fresh acidity there. There's a degree of tartness that suggests to me that a little bit of um, malic acid may have been retained in this during fermentation. There's a beautiful clean fruit, um, and I think that's reflecting the fact that the, um, the approach here is to cold settle the juice so they're, they're, they're fermenting very clean juice, and that 
that's showing itself in the sort of lovely peachiness. There's a lovely texture there. So there has been some lees aging. I understand that this will have aged for 12 months uh, in a combination of barrel and stainless steel tank um, with its fine yeast lees. So that will have added um, some richness and some roundness. There's, there are notes of um, lemon curd, that sort of smoothness of texture um, and a, a sort of a lemoniness that's not quite as piquant as lemon juice or something like that. The wine's balance is lovely actually, the alcohol at 13% isn't intruding on the fruit, it's not smothering it, it's um, adding a little bit of roundness to the finish. It's also perhaps emphasising a slight toastiness, there's a, a little bit of oak showing there. I don't think this has had much in terms of new oak, but there's just a slight sort of toasty, maybe a slight fermentation um, aroma from the yeast um, before you end up on a finish that starts with that sort of lemon curd and peach note and then finishes with much more of a sort of a mineral almost heading towards a sort of a, um, a chalky and then notes of st struck match sort of notes of um, minerality there so yes thank you very much for watching this was um, La Chablisienne's Chablis Premier Cru Montemilieu from 2019. Um, I think a, a really nice example of a richer, more forward, more ripe style of Premier Cru Chablis. Uh, a wine that will certainly age for another two to three years very happily, but is you know, very accessible now. Um, so thank you very much for watching. I do hope you'll join us again sometime soon. I do hope you'll leave some comments, let us know what you think of the video and of the wine. Please do think about signing up and joining us on YouTube, and please do join us again for another tasting soon, mate. Bye now.